my name is Tyler Sladen. I live here in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I grew up on the South Shore of Massachusetts, mostly hunting deer, turkey, and a little bit of waterfowl in the salt marshes. My grandfather, my dad, my stepfather, they all hunted. My mom doesn't hunt, but the, we all grew up around it, so it wasn't very foreign, but I'm the first one in my family to kind of go down the path of falconry. Originally, I pursued falconry through my photo interest. I wanted something cool to take pictures of. I met a guy named Michael Baran. He's the owner of the company I work for now. He was a falconer when I was stationed in Texas. And they were hunting with Harris Hawks and a couple falconers all flying together. They're hunting squirrels. And the Harris Hawks were kind of grunting at each other and kind of you could hear them communicating. Here. And the dog was just always had an eye on the bird and was always keeping up with the bird and it was the dog was working to keep pressure on the squirrel while the hawks also kept pressure on the squirrel hoping the squirrel would make a mistake. It is perfect. To see all that and then to see the falconers that owned those birds kind of keeping up with the flight and these dogs get it they know what's going on and they know their role all part of this big machine dish to catch this one squirrel i was like this is insane and this is just the surface seeing situations like that i was like i need to replicate that but i want to replicate it in my own way and for me it's desert quail with a goshawk my setters, my vislas, and now my cocker. So I've got three birds. I've got North American goshawk, a female Harris hawk, and then I've got a male Jeer Peregrine Saker. Mainly I'm just working with the goshawk, Hash Brown right now, it's his first year. It's very important that his first year, he kind of laid the foundation for the rest of his life this season and next season. So he's kind of been my main focus and he's the one that flies quail and upland in the ways that I enjoy it over bird dogs. Training occipiters is all pretty level across the board. You're really just setting them up in scenarios to be successful and building confidence. They, they really, really lean heavy on confidence. A bird that's confident on its quarry is gonna do better and better on that quarry. And it's gonna start to do things you didn't think you could do. Like you can get a goshawk to go from only catching running quail to start to catching quail on the initial flight to then evolve into catching quail on the initial rise. And then, I mean, once he's confident and knows that he can do it. There's kind of no stopping him. Talking all the water. You're kind of training all the time too, and birds will train you. Whereas some days he'll be in the mood and he'll be in the zone and everything's going good. You can catch three, four, five quail. And then there's other days where you might work your tail off to catch one and you need to recognize that that bird really worked for it and you, you need to end on that note and you need to end on a note that makes him want to try that hard again the next day and maybe the next day he'll be in the mood to catch three it's it, it's it's touch and go and it, there's no bird that's truly fully trained throw me a water would you you got quite a bit yeah. 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 Yeah, he's not ruining the chest for you guys. That's the pretty part. So now I'll do... Tell me when he's out of food. For a situation like this, 
Right. You want his confidence to stay up. Like, oh, I can catch around these people. Yeah. We yeah. kind of tested his patience okay. today. It's kind of a rite of passage to find a nest, pull the bird, climb the tree. It can be the easiest thing in the world or it can be absolutely terrifying if you've never done it before. I've climbed a lot of Cooper's hawk nests, but climbing my first goshawk nest was definitely different to get attacked by a pair of birds while you're dangling 80 feet in the tree. And they're drawing blood and they're drawing blood in a way that it hurts. Not really something you can be prepared for. It's something you just gotta go through. And when he's doing it, it's called putting over. He's transferring it from his crop to his stomach. Once it's done and over with, you're like, wow, that was cool. Um, in the moment, you're kind of like, oh, <laughs> why did I do this? Uh, why didn't I just buy a bird from a breeder? But it, it, it's cool. The United States is the, like one of the few countries where falconers are still allowed to pull birds from the wild because they've done the research to prove that falconry has no negative ramifications on birds of prey populations and they manage it just like they would Game birds, I mean, they issue tags for goshawks and Harris hawks and peregrines in different states, and they're all, every state's different. Um, I think here it's six goshawks a year are al allowed to go to falconers. However, out of the six permits issued last year, two were filled, so it's, it's not easy, it's not guaranteed. You still gotta work for it, you still gotta earn it. I've been with that bird every single day, so it's, if you want to do falconry at this level, it's not something that you can just wake up and do. It, 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 it does become a commitment. However, there are different kinds of falconry that you could just trap your bird in October, November and let it go in February and then have a break the rest of the year. I mean, that's why I tried to say that. My falconry is not, your falconry, it's not their falconry. It's different for everyone, and there's so many different kinds of ways to kind of navigate your falconry experience. There's so many different quarries, so many different birds, and then you have all the different ways to fly them on those quarries. So, I mean, you can spend your entire life and barely breach the surface, and that's, to me, that's the coolest thing about falconry. I mean, I could do this for the next 50 years of my life, and I didn't get to experience the other 90% of falconry in, in this, just this country alone offers. I mean, just this state alone. I mean, there's people that just hunt sage grouse in Wyoming, Utah, and that's all they do. And there's people east of the Mississippi, they spend, I mean, they spend 40 years hunting squirrels with red tails, that's it. And that's cool, and that if that's, what they want to do and that's what makes them happy and that's what they enjoy. It's not a competition, it's it's what it's truly what you enjoy. So for me it's the bird dogs and upland birds with a goshawk. He's gonna do it again. You did alright today, but you just saw something.